Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Golf Keystone Petroleum Limited full year results investor presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen only mode. Questions are encouraged. They can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab that's just situated on the right hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company can review all questions submitted today and we'll publish those responses where it's appropriate to do so on the Investor Meet company platform. Um, before we begin, I would just like to submit the following poll and I would now like to hand you over to CEO John Harris. Uh, John, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for that uh, introduction. Hello and thank you for joining the, this presentation following the announcement of our 2023 uh, full year results this morning. I'm John Harris, I'm the CEO. I'm joined today by Ian Weatherland, CFO. We'll be taking you through our financial performance in a bit. We're pleased to be able to speak directly to our retail investors who account for an important part of our share register. We are continually looking for opportunities to engage um, and receive feedback from all of our investors. And we are pleased that you've joined us today. After the presentation, we'll be happy to take your questions. Slide two, please. Okay, slide two disclaimer. This is our regular legal disclaimer and we'll leave you to review it yourselves. Um, I'd like to remind you that the presentation is also available on the website, of course, but you'll, you'll see it presented um, during this webinar. Um, slide three, please. 2023 operational and financial highlights. 2023 was a challenging year with our operational financial performance materially impacted by the suspension of Kurdistan exports following the closure of the Iraq Turkey pipeline on the 25th of March, as well as continued delays to payments from our Kurdistan regional government. Having entered the year with significant production and development momentum, we were forced to take decisive action to reduce capital expenditures and costs and safely transition our operations to trucking and local sales in the second half of the year. In doing so, we have been able to protect the business um, and successfully adapt to our new environment while maintaining a rigorous focus on safety. Since the startup of local sales in July 2023, we've been able to more than cover our reduced monthly cost run rate of around $6 million and significantly reduce accounts payable. Excess cash generation is now being used to improve our liquidity position with our cash balance at 86 million as of yesterday, while we continue to review opportunities to further reduce uh, costs. <coughs> Excuse me. While local sales demand, demand has been difficult to predict, and we continue to sell at steep discounts to Brent. Volumes have rebounded since mid-January, and we are seeing strong demand in the near term, with our, with our low break-even at current prices providing downside protection. While there remains no timeline for the restart of exports or repayment of outstanding receivables, we continue to actively engage with government stakeholders and see significant value to be unlocked for our shareholders, Kurdistan and Iraq, from securing a solution. Turning now to slide five, resilient in local sales environment. To start, I'd like to, I'd like to highlight our track record of successfully managing through challenging circumstances to ensure that we remain well positioned to realize the deep underlying value of the Shaikan field once circumstances improve. With the increase in local sales demand since mid-January 2024, we, are, we have been able to ramp up production and move to 24-7 truck loading operations at both production facilities. Based on March, gross average sales to date of around 43,000 barrels of oil per day, we are currently loading around 215 trucks a day. We are pleased that the reservoir and our operations have responded well to, to the increase in demand. Subject to local sales demand and considering our limited capital program, which is focused on safety critical un, un upgrades and production maintenance expenditures only, we see the, growth, the current gross production potential of the field at between 43,000 to 45,000 barrels of oil per day. As ever, we continue to manage natural field declines, estimated at an annualized 6 to 10%, and the productivity of wells to avoid traces of water. We see robust local sales demand in the near term and are focused on maintaining our current strong performance. Looking further ahead, the local market remains difficult to predict with volumes and prices driven by local supply and demand dynamics. Nevertheless, we have, un we have downside protection to current volumes with our current gross production break-even of around 22,000 barrels per day at current realized prices of around $25 a barrel. Next slide, please. 2023, a year of significant operational transition. 
Despite the volatility, we've been able to protect our business and balance sheet and successfully adapt to our new temporary environment. We entered the year with significant momentum with the Jurassic Reservoir expansion project, driving production to record highs of over 55,000 barrels a day on several days in March 23, and good progress being made towards sanction of the fulfilled development plan. Following the unexpected closure of the Iraq-Turkey pipeline, we lost access to our export route. We shut in the Shaikan field completely on the 13th of April and moved swiftly to wind down all expansion activity in order to aggressively reduce our spending and preserve liquidity. Following a period of negotiations and due diligence on local buyers, we were able to restart production and commence local sales on the 19th of July. All sales to date have been via truck, trucking apart from the brief period of utilizing our pipeline in reverse flow to a refinery in Erbil. Volumes increased steadily from July to October 2023 as we agreed terms with new buyers. Lower demand and volumes followed in November and December 2023 as our other producers in the region ramped up supply, local refineries became constrained, and winter weather impacted trucking logistics and dampened appetite for certain refined products. Despite the fluctuation, we more than covered our monthly expenditures in the second half of the year. In 2024, we have seen a rebound in volume since mid-January, with gross average sales year-to-date of around 33,000 barrels of oil per day. The, increase reflect, the increases reflect higher market demand certain refined products such as heavy fuel oil and the easing of seasonally seasonal logistic challenges as the weather in Kurdistan has improved. The current realized price is around $25 a barrel, which has reduced since the second half of last year in line with local market pricing. Slide seven, please. Estimated gross 2P reserves. As I mentioned, we have been pleased with how the field has responded to recent local sales demand, and we've seen no degradation to the reservoir from the extended shut-in. However, we do not expect to con consider a return to field development until exports have restarted and we have confidence in KLG current production payments, the payment of our arrears and the fiscal and commercial environment. Consequently, we have prepared an internal estimate of gross 2P reserves at the end of 2023, incorporating a delay to development. I acknowledge it is hard to predict when exports will resume. For modelling purposes, we have assumed that they restart in, the Q, in Q4 of 2024, but the pipeline may open earlier or there could be further delays. Once exports resume, we will start planning and preparation activities for a potential return to investment once all sales pay, payments normalize. We are currently assuming that we will resume facilities expansion activities in 2025 based on an assumed restart of pipeline exports in Q4 2024 which include water handling that we see as a priority to assure long-term well productivity. Also, we assume a, a return to drilling development drilling in the first half of 2026, as it will take time to procure a rig and acquire long lead items. The estimated development delay drives an 8% reduction in gross 2P reserves to 458 million barrels as at the 31st of December, 2023, as recoverable volumes are pushed beyond the end of the license period in 2043. I'm sure that there are further optimizations that could be considered to recover our reserve position, but this will be subject to technical and commercial work once the pipeline is open. Despite the adjustment, the Shaikan field remains a large underdeveloped asset as demonstrated by a reserves to production ratio of 28 years, using production of 44,200 barrels of oil per day which was 2022's production number, our last year of full export sales. The reserves to production ratio of 28 years underlines the significant upside development potential of the Shaikan field and compares favorably to our peers in Kurdistan at almost double our closest peer. Slide eight, significant potential upside. Before I hand over to Ian, I'd like to highlight the significant value that we believe could be unlocked for our shareholders and broader stakeholder base from an exports restart solution and a return to higher net backs and regular payments. We have outlined uh, on this slide what an improvement in our operating environment could mean for our cash flow generation capability, capital allocation, and sustainability strategy. If you look at box one, a return to exports with clarity on past and future payments could be transformative for our cash flow generation. Selling at international oil prices again would more than double the current realized prices we are achieving from local sales, 
or the unrecovered cost of cost of from previous investments of around 224 million gross would would provide significant support for cash flows. The repayment of the 151 million dollars of outstanding receivables by the KG would add further upside. Box two. Cash flows would, would, could, would be used to ensure that we maintain a strong balance sheet and would be invested wisely. We will only consider material investment in the field with an exports restart, KLG payment normalization, and a stable and transparent fiscal and economic environment. Once confident in the investment environment, we would expect a return to field development. Box three, we continue to believe that distribution of excess cash by way of either dividends or share buybacks is an important is important to reward shareholders in line with our proven track record prior to the uh, Iraq Turkey pipeline closure. As the operating environment and company's liquidity position improve, we will keep under review our capability to reinstate distributions. In addition to our high to our strategic commitment to shareholder distributions, our highly uh, discounted uh, current equity valuation provides significant upside to investors. And finally, box four. A return to investment would enable us to reinvigorate progress towards becoming a more sustainable business. Due to the current liquidity situation, we have paused all work on decarbonisation opportunities, including our progress towards sanctioning a gas management plan and the target to more than half scope one emissions intensity. With greater clarity on the investment environment, we plan to review and reinstate this target. In the meantime, we are in the early stages of exploring alternative options to the gas management plan with a focus on optimizing scope, implementation timing, and cost. Beyond emissions, there's a significant potential economic value to be unlocked for both Kurdistan and Iraq through the restart of exports and the re-establishment of a constructive investment environment for international oil companies and investors. Billions of dollars of revenue could begin flowing again into the economy, while while the significant further investment needed to maintain and grow Kurdistan's oil production would benefit local suppliers and communities. We continue to work as a company and industry to push for a solution. With that, I will now hand you over to to Ian for the financial review. Great. Uh, Thank you very much, John. Um, Before I I jump in, I'd just like to re-emphasize what John has said. Really appreciate this forum to have a more direct line with our retail investors. You have and always have had an important part in terms of liquidity and, and trading in this company, and I'm certain that that will continue in, in the future. Now, turning to the uh, the financial performance highlights, now, as everybody's aware, in 2022, we delivered record profitability and cash flow generation, which enabled us to reward shareholders with dividends of $215 million. Also, importantly, we repaid our $100 million bond, and that was ahead of our maturity, and that left us debt-free. Uh, We believe that it is important to maintain a conservative financial position that provides us with flexibility to manage through the challenges that that we typically face in this environment, which is high risk, high return. As a result, we entered 2023 in a position of financial strength with cash of $120 million and no debt. This strength was vital to enable us to withstand the impact of the suspension of exports and continued delays to KRG payments, which impacted our financial performance materially. Soon after the export pipeline was shut in, we took steps to aggressively reduce our costs with a significant step down in activity and staffing levels. This is evident from the reduction in net capex that you see on the bottom left, where you see it going in the second half down to $11 million. Following the the successful transition to local sales in July 2023, we've been able to more than cover our reduced monthly costs, enabling us to pay down accounts payable. And we exited 2023 with $82 million. And and as you can see in the top left chart, this is roughly in line with the net cash level over the past few years. Next slide, please. Uh, Adjusted EBITDA decreased from just under $360 million in 2022 to $50 million in 2023. While we enjoyed record production levels in the first quarter, gross 2023 average production halved 
relative to 2022 to just under 22,000 barrels a day with no revenue from the 25th of March to the beginning of local sales on the 19th of July. Production in the second half of the year was sold to local buyers at an average realized price of about $30 a barrel, reducing average realized prices for the year to around $41 a barrel versus the average in 2022 of $74 a barrel. Realized prices for local sales, which are currently at around $25 a barrel, are driven by supply and demand dynamics in the local market. While local sales have been sufficient for us to cover our costs and generate excess cash flow, they still remain at deep discounts to date at Brent. We have consistently emphasized the importance of being a low cost operator, and we have one of the lowest cost structures in the industry. Low costs enable us to maximize cash flow and provide downside protection. With the closure of the pipeline, we completed a detailed analysis of our cost structure and further reduced OPEX and GNA. Finally, we incurred one-off costs of around $10 million related to the wind down of expansion activity and monetization of inventory. About half of this amount was non-cash. On to the next slide. The impact of lower adjusted EBITDA and increasing delays to KRG payments drove a significant reduction in free cash flow from $267 million in 2022 to a cash outflow of $13 million in 2023. The closure of the pipeline towards the end of March resulted in only two KRG payment receipts in the year, with the last payment being received in March 2023 for September 2022 sales. Accounts receivable totaling $151 million net to Gulf Keystone for October 2022 to March 2023 oil sales remain outstanding. The resumption of pipeline exports and consistent budget transfers from Iraq to Kurdistan are likely required before we see a return to more normalized payments and the KRG providing international oil companies a plan to address the outstanding arrears. While local sales were at reduced prices, they were an important part um, of our cash flow and enabled us to more than cover our costs in the second half of the year, allowing us to pay down accounts payable. Local sales cash receipts during the period were about $44 million. To manage credit risk, buyers are required to prepay for all local crude purchases. Our net entitlement is currently 36% of gross sales. Capitalizing on the momentum from 2022, we had planned to spend 160 to $175 million on drilling and facilities expansion activities in 2023. With delays in reopening of the pipeline, we moved quickly to reduce expenditures, resulting in a significant reduction in net capex to $58 million. Following the payment of a $25 million interim dividend in March, we canceled the payment of the 2022 final dividend to preserve liquidity. Local sales, cost reduction, and a managing accounts payable have supported our liquidity position. Our cash balance as at yesterday was $86 million. As John previously mentioned, we continue to believe distributions, either by way of dividends or buybacks, are important to reward shareholders. As the operating environment and the company's liquidity position in, improve, we will keep under review our ability to reinstate distributions. Now looking at our cost structure. Gulf Keystone has consistently maintained strict control of its costs and has a track record of producing one of the lowest operating costs and GNA per barrel among Kurdistan and international peers. While costs have been increasing in the first quarter of the year, reflecting increased operational activity and investment in the Shikan field, following the suspension of exports, we move quickly to reduce our expenditures to preserve liquidity. Operating costs were down 14% 
relative to 2022 to $36 million, reflecting the shut-in of production as well as cost-saving initiatives. The increase in gross OPEX per barrel to $5.60 is primarily a function of the 50% reduction in annual production to just under 22,000 barrels of oil per day. As production levels increase, we expect unit operating costs to decrease. Other GNA expenses in the year were 14% lower relative to 2022 at around $10 million. The reduction was principally driven by cost savings and no bonus payments to staff. These were partially offset by non-recurring corporate costs of $2 million in the first half of the year. Now moving on and looking at our cost and our, our balance sheet. Uh, aggressive cost to aggressive cuts to net capex, opex, and GNA reduced average monthly cost to below six million dollars in the second half of the year. We expect to maintain the monthly expenditure run rate at or below six million dollars in 2024, while we continue to review further cost reduction op opportunities. It is important to note the run rate includes costs associated with maintaining full production capability to capitalize on, on increased local sales, as is currently the case, or a reopening of the pipeline. As John mentioned, we have a lean work program in 2024, equating to an estimated $20 million of net capex. Expenditures are planned for safety critical upgrades and production maintenance. The transition to local sales has enabled us to cover our monthly costs and use excess cash generation to strengthen our balance sheet. Accounts payable, which includes trade payables and accrued expenditures, were down by almost 50% in the second half of the year to $26 million. With the rebound in local sales volumes in 2024, we have now paid all remaining overdue invoices and today we stand at an accounts payable balance that is about one half the 2023 year end balance. At the same time, we have increased our cash balance to $86 million. Looking ahead, we are focused on driving local sales and maintaining tight control of our cost structure with the objective of further strengthening our liquidity position. To illustrate the potential, Current gross average sales of around 43,000 barrels of oil per day generates around $6 million of monthly free cash flow at a realized price of $25 a barrel. With that, I'd like to now turn it back to you, John, to wrap up. Okay, slide 16, Outlook. Uh, thanks, Ian. To summarize, following a challenging year, we have successfully protected our business and adapted to the current local sales environment <laughs> in which we are resilient and cash flow generative with significant upside exposure. Looking ahead to the remainder of 2024, we are focused on three priorities. First, we are working to maintain our recent strong local sales performance in a safe and sustainable manner. While the market remains difficult to predict, we see robust demand in the near term and are planning to maintain the production potential of the field of between 43,000 to 45,000 barrels of oil per day with minimal investment. Second, we are minimizing costs and improving liquidity. We expect our monthly cost run rate to remain at or below 6 million in 2024, and we continue to look for ways to minimize costs while retaining the operational capability we need to respond to local sales demand and the restart of exports. Following the significant reduction in accounts payable, we are now using excess cash to further strengthen our liquidity position. Finally, while there remains no de uh, defined timeline, we are continuing to engage with government stakeholders to push for an exports restart solution. We believe that uh, this could transform the cash flow generation capability and value proposition of our business, underpinned by our unwavering commitment to capital discipline. We continue to believe distributions to shareholders are important. As the operating environment and company's liquidity position improve, we will keep under review our capability to reinstate distributions. With, with that, I'll now hand um, I'll now hand back to the operator for questions. 
Perfect, John, Ian, that's great. And thank you very much indeed for your presentation this afternoon. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab that's situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, but just while the company takes a few moments to review those questions that were submitted already, I would like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Um, Ian, John, we did receive a number of pre-submitted questions ahead of today's event. And as you can see there in the Q&A tab, we've received a number of questions throughout your presentation this afternoon as well. So firstly, thank you to all of those on the call for taking the time uh, to submit their questions. And John, Ian, if I may at this point hand over to you just to read out those questions and give your responses where it's appropriate to do so. And then I'll pick up from you at the end. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Right. Um, <clears throat> first question. Dear exec team, is there any scope to reintroduce dividends whilst only selling oil locally? Or are dividends wholly dependent on resuming exports through Turkey? Do you want to take that? Yeah, I'd, I'd, ha I'd happy, be happy to do that. A very, very important question. I'm um, really maybe just stepping back and, and thinking first off about our strategy. Um, our, our strategy has always been focused on profitable production growth, balance with returns to shareholders, while maintaining a conservative financial profile in order to provide us with flexibility. Of course, as we move through different stages in, in Kurdistan, we have to adapt to that. We've seen the adaptation um, to, to local sales and the, the near term focus has been on strengthening our balance sheet. You've seen the, the big step down with the support of our suppliers in actually reducing accounts payable to now a more operating level, We've seen cash start to, to, to turn the corner. So we're starting to look at opportunities to, to further strengthen that financial strength. Now that said, we, we still see as we navigate through this, the importance to maintain some degree of financial cushion in order to make sure that we maintain focused on the, on the prize, which is, as John had mentioned, over 450 million barrels of 2P reserves. That's a massive resource that can pay uh, dividends to, to shareholders over an extended period of time. Now, that said, where we sit here today, looking at our prior demonstrated commitment to distributions, we started with share buybacks and we've been paying dividends since 2000 and uh, share buybacks and then uh, dividends in 2019. Sector leading dividends in 2022 before we had to slow things down. If things were to carry on on a trajectory where we are able to, you know, at the current level, maximize local sales, we'll continue to, to maintain a very low cost structure, you will over time see the cash balance increase. Um, we do have ongoing discussions um, at the board around looking at our liquidity, our cash flow, our cost structure and the like. So I do see, notwithstanding the fact that our preference would be to return to exports and growth and really drive the true underlying value of the asset, there, there could be an op opportunity as we travel through towards the end of the year of potential dividends to, to, to shareholders. It is critical, we recognize that our shareholders have been very supportive of us and we need to reward our shareholders for that support along the way great thank you uh, second question um if it's so advantageous to all stakeholders to restart exports through the trans turkey iraq pipeline why is it taking so long to complete the negotiations who is profiting from the disparity between the 25 dollar oil price we get and the and the circa 85 brent price today is this an impediment to exports restarting? Um, the first part of the question about why is it taking so long to complete the negotiations? I think, firstly, you know, if this is, was just a purely economic or commercial decision, um, then it would be quickly resolved. But there's, there's clearly a lot of politics involved between, um, between Baghdad and Erbil, um, and uh, some other the political machinations are continuing. Um, and you'll see that some of that's reported in the press and some of it isn't reported in the press. And those have to run their course. 
um, in order to ultimately resolve the, the budget, which is what's going to take to free up payments to the KRG and to get oil uh, flowing again. Um, who is profiting from the disparity between the $25 oil price and the 85 bread price? Um, well, apparently there's a, there's a local pricing for, for products, not oil. So obviously we sell, we sell um, crude oil, uh, unprocessed, and we don't possess the ability to, uh, to, to process that uh, at the moment or to refine it. Um, and therefore, we, we are a price taker in the local market um, for, for crude oil and not for product. Um, obviously, it costs money to uh, refine uh, crude oil um, into products, and then there's a price to uh, get that product to market. But unfortunately, we are, we are a price taker, and actually the local market is, uh, is somewhat of an oligopoly, and it's restricted. we're restricted to uh, a few uh, buyers, um, and that's why there is... Uh, while well, there's a price disparity. Um, is there an impediment to exports restarting? Is this an impediment? I don't think so. Ultimately, I think uh, the government of Iraq is very focused on if it's got to pay um, fair budget share to the Kurdistan region, it will certainly be seeking to get the revenue in from the oil, its oil potential to, to, to pay for some or, or, in fact, probably all of their budget allocation. Um, okay, next question. The recent Iraq-Turkey pipeline issues over the past year have once again highlighted our need for geographical diversification. What, what are the company doing in, in this regard? And what are, what are the medium-term plans for diversification? Well, I guess you, I think you will understand that at the moment, we're currently focused on improving our liquidity position, um, having been in what I would consider a difficult position last year. And we're also, of course, pushing for exports to, to realize the upside um, that that would bring. As we as we've talked about, um, of course, we will consider um, value accretive opportunities outside of uh, outside of that. But that's I think uh, once we've got once we've re-established exports and we've got a uh, healthy cash flow and we've re-established our, our our share price. Um, next question: May I ask if you have received further assurances from the KLG concerning payments payment of arrears? So. Um, what, what, we've, what we've heard is that uh, the KRG are committed to honoring our existing contracts, um, and that includes the payment of the arrears. Uh, I think that's probably the simplest way I, c I can answer that, so I'm not going to further, further expand on it. Um, the pipeline is currently closed. What is stopping GKP in trucking their oil as an export product and not sell uh, as a local at a huge discount? Um, Ultimately, the export of crude oil is controlled, um, and we would uh, we would clearly get we would we would attract the ire of uh, the Iraqi government if we were to export as crude oil. Um, and the tr trucking of products, obviously, we don't have the products; it's not a refined product; it's crude oil that we sell. Um, the trucking of products is is controlled. Uh, and it's licensed by the uh, KRG. Um, so we'd have to enter that market and, and get a license. But first of all, we'd have to get access to to um, being able to refine uh, refine our crude oil as well, in addition to that. Um, okay, what's the latest on the pipeline discussions, KRG, Turkey, Iraq? Okay, I think what you've seen in the market is that uh, the KRG, um, the KRG and Erbil continue to discuss this. It's not just a simple question around uh, opening the pipeline. It's also a conversation around uh, budgets um, and budget payments and regular budget payments. It's also a conversation about uh, carving out, potentially carving out payments of civil servants in KLG to be funded by the central government, which some people in government in, in the Erbil um, support and some don't. So that's causing some, some, some difficulties. Plus also there's been some uh, okay, uh, sorry, the F FGI, the federal government of Iraq, um, and the uh, Supreme Court in Iraq has also uh, are met, are interfering with the uh, election process within Kurdistan, which is also causing, uh, causing some issues and some conversations about landing the, uh, the outstanding pipeline conversations. With regard to Turkey, I would say Turkey have made it very clear that they are pipelines open and open for business and available. And um, I think we'll see that further reinforced um, 
you'll have read recently around the security assistance that Turkey wants with from, from Iraq and with regard to support against the PKK, the, the uh, Turkish Kurd um, movement. Um, and I think they've, uh, they've got those assurances um, recently. And I think there'll be, uh, I think Erdogan, the president of Turkey, is traveling to Baghdad probably later in April, beginning of May. And the conversations uh, are, or well, the agenda is further discussion on security support, plus, um, plus water conversations that I think Iraq is very keen to, secure, to land and secure further water um, uh, further water concessions, um, and, and and lastly, but by no means least, uh, oil the oil export through the pipeline. I think will will absolutely be on the be on the agenda. So I think there are things are progressing, um, and plus also uh, President Al Sadani will be of Iraq is is traveling to uh, the U.S. following the Eid holiday for after Ramadan in latter part of uh, other part of April. And we're expecting there, uh, we're obviously lobbying as part of Apicure, um, we're lobbying um, the US government to uh, push uh, Sudani to resolve the outstanding issues and, and uh, get the pipeline open and oil flowing again. John, Ian, if I may just jump back in there and thank you very much indeed for being so generous of your time then addressing all of those questions that came in from investors. And of course, we will be able to give you back all of the questions submitted today, as well as any further ones that do come through back um, immediately after the presentation has ended, just for you to review to then add any additional responses, of course, where it's appropriate to do so. And we'll publish all those responses out on the platform. Um, but John, perhaps before really just looking to redirect those on the call to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourself and the company, if I could please just ask you for a few closing comments to wrap up with that'd be great yeah thank you thank you very much um so i think just in terms of closing comments what i would like to do is highlight um resurgent rebounding uh, local sales you know we've seen it um we've seen it rise from uh kind of quite, quite a low state in january to year to date thirty three thousand three hundred barrels of oil per day and we've seen a real surge in march going up to, we've averaged just over 43,000 barrels a day, uh, March to, beginning of March to date. So hopeful, hopeful that we see can continued uh, strong, uh, strong demand locally. Um, with that, we currently have, uh, uh, we're strengthening with the, with the excess cash we are generating, we're, we're strengthening our balance sheet. So we see it now at um, 80, $86 million in cash at the moment. And all our accounts payable uh, are now current, which was uh, obviously a big issue for us at the middle of last year when we couldn't see through to even local sales. So um, we think we've managed that situation quite well to get our, our accounts payable down to almost, uh, well, down to being current, which is a great achievement. So uh, now being cash generative in the current environment uh, with upside, upside potential from the exports restarting and payments normalizing, we see our share as a potential fantastic uh, value currently. Thank you very much. Perfect, John, that's great. And thank you once again for updating investors this afternoon. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in all that the management team can really better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Gulf Keystone Petroleum Limited, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. So good afternoon to you all.